Hey folks, Technivers here, and welcome back to Creality Corner. Now today we are going to be taking a look at the LD002H and comparing it to the LD002R. Now this one is slightly larger on the build plate, so you can get a slightly larger print, but let's check out some of the other specifications today on Creality Corner. Technivers channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. Check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash technivers. Okay, so as I said, this is the LD002H, and I'm going to be filling it up with some resin here in just a second. Let's let it fire up. I have the LD002R over here. <clears throat> it's going to beep a little bit, and there are some differences that I wanted to tell you about, such as the build size. So on the O2H, uh, you get 130 by 82 by 160 which is actually quite a bit larger than the 119 by 65 by 160 over here. So it's width and depth you're looking at, not necessarily height. The height is the same at 160 millimeters, but you do have a larger build plate, a larger screen, so you can get a larger model from this particular printer. It also has a higher resolution and a lot quicker curing and printing time. So it takes about six to eight seconds for a layer on this guy, this guy can do it in about one to four seconds, so almost uh, between half and a quarter of the time. Um, and we're going to go ahead and put some resin into here and turn this guy on. I got to get another glove. Now, it's important to note that when using resins, you should be wearing gloves and they should be nitro gloves. These gloves at the moment I'm using, unfortunately, are not. You need to be careful when you're using gloves that aren't nitro gloves because they can melt and fuse to the plastic. I don't actually plan on touching any plastic or spilling any. We're just going to basically dump this into there. First, I need to shake it up. And this is one of the downfalls of a resin printer. It is a little bit on the messier side to deal with as far as prepping and cleanup go. But you don't have to deal with all that pesky bed leveling that you constantly have with filament. And it is a much more compact machine without losing much of the size. I mean, it can't quite print as big as the Ender 3 Pro or the Ender 3 version 2, but you can get a decent sized print out of that. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna be printing a wizard model that I found on Thingiverse, and we'll take a look at that right now. Let me put the lid back on this guy, and we will take a look at how you slice with this printer. Now, let's jump over to Chidu Box here. That is this program right here, and as you can see, I have a model ready to go. Now you'll notice that the support system is quite a bit different than the support system with filament printing, and that is good. That is because it is a different process for removing the filament, and it's, I mean, the reason these little balls are here are basically to reduce the contact with the model itself. It's going to print those on top, and then basically you can clip in between there and have the least amount of finishing possible. So we're gonna get this model printing and I will show you the printer as it is in action. Of course, we do need to change some of these times. I have eight seconds set as the exposure time because I was using the LD002H. We're gonna go ahead and change this to four seconds, the maximum time that should be needed for this printer. I'll leave the bottom exposure time at 60 seconds. I tend to do that for the first few layers to ensure that they stick properly. The only problem is you don't really want to over cure. So let's take a look at exactly how this process works. Now I have this model sliced already and it's not going to send a point to point reference for machine code for a print head, say to print the actual model. What we're going to be doing is sending layers to a screen in the printer and it's going to use the light in that screen to cure the resin in a particular image pattern. So this is all the images stacked up and this is basically the file we're going to be using and that's the reason that you use Chidu Box and not a regular slicer like Kira. And we are now printing on the LD002H. It's that simple. All I had to do was insert the USB stick that I saved my file to and hit the print button and select the file I wanted to print. So we're printing that Warlock model that I showed you. It is going to take a little while, although it is also a lot faster than FDM printing if you consider the fact that we are taking about four seconds for a whole layer 
which on an FDM machine can take up to several minutes depending on your print speed. It is amazing how this basically flashes a whole layer at a time and builds the model super, super quickly. So we will go ahead and come back to this print when it's closer to finishing up, take a look, and we'll take it off the build plate, remove some of that support, and I will show you how well this model, this printer does models in fine, fine detail. It's a very, very nice machine. I do have some other models around here I could show you, but I figure I'd show you the whole printing process from finding a file to the slicer you use to removing it from the build plate. And that way you kind of have a better idea of whether or not you're willing to deal with one of these machines. Because as I said, it can be a little bit of a mess, but you do get a lot higher quality item and you can get some amazing, amazing prints off of these machines. And here we are with our finished model on the build plate. Let's go ahead and remove the protective plastic covering and get a better look at this model here. Now obviously we are going to put gloves on before we remove it from the build plate, but you can see that we have a, a nice finished product here. The support looks clean and everything has come together quite nicely. So what we're going to do is we're going to glove up we're going to take this off and then we will remove it from the build plate itself. So I've got my gloves and the first thing you're going to want to do is loosen this knob here and we're going to try and use our spatula that comes included with the printer here. Now this is a plastic spatula and we're just going to kind of get this excess to drip down. If you take a look at the printer to the right there, the LD002R. Um, that one has a print that I printed that is a drip tray that basically mounts right here and leaves it at an angle so it will drip off on its own and I'm already making a mess here. This is what I mean by this being a little bit of a process. So I have the build plate removed. We have the model. You can see there's still quite a bit of gunk on there. So what we need to do is remove it from the build plate then we will remove support and then this is a standard photopolymer resin so it's going to be washed in a alcohol solution this is isopropyl alcohol and it'll basically rinse off and dissolve all the extra stuff on there before we do the final curing process and harden the actual model itself and here we have a nice close-up of our finished model. Let's take a little bit better look at this guy here. You can see that a lot of the fine details have come out really nice from the really fine knife hilt to the tip of his spear to the tip of his finger. Now I can see each individual knuckle on this hand and in comparison to my finger you can see exactly how tiny that is. So those are some very very fine details worked in. The chain across the front of his uh, uh, outfit there, the clothing ripples, the belt, which is basically just a very, very fine texture. All of these small details that you wouldn't be able to get quite as fine on an FDM printer unless you decided to use a super small nozzle and print forever. So you get a really fast, really, really nice model with this machine, and it is quite an improvement over the LD002H in that it will print in literally a half to a quarter of the time and still give you something that comes out looking like this. Now this is a pretty fine miniature. It does need a little bit of cleaning up and I think a little bit more curing time in order to be viable, to be uh, finished with a little bit of uh, sanding and burr removing and then painting, but I think that this would be a very, very nice play piece. And we're actually gonna be doing a video entirely on making miniatures here pretty soon. We just haven't quite gotten into it yet. Maybe we'll involve this guy in that somehow. Definitely going to be using the LD002H here to do that. Um, and if you have the choice, definitely pick up one of these machines. It is a very, very good resin printer for a decent price. I have a link down below if you'd like to grab one. Please do. It helps the channel out and it doesn't cost you anything extra. And I know for a fact that they have these in stock and on hand. You'll be able to get a really good deal on a printer that gives you something of very, very good quality. Now, this is one of my first prints with this, this machine. I do have a couple other ones laying around. But uh, let's say I do have a little bit more dialing in to do with the settings. Particularly down here, you can see that I did have a little bit of lifting at the base. Now that is not the printer per se. I think I need to go in and tighten up the FEP sheet in there, the little plastic part that it builds on, 
because I could see it flexing a little bit as it was printing, but I'm still very, very pleased with the outcome and that could easily be sandable, which would have to be done to remove the support anyway. So this is going to be a definite buy if you're in the resin market or looking for a budget resin printer, or even if you're just a Creality fan and you really want to get a hold of something that is not an FDM machine, I can highly recommend this. Hopefully in the future I will be looking at the LD006 and that is a whole different beast entirely. It is about twice the size and it will allow you to print models about the size of the ones you can get off the Ender 3. So that will be something to look forward to on one of the future Creality Corners. But so far for the comparison between the 002R and the 002H, I'm definitely going to have to give it to the newer version. I like the red cover, it is a little bit sleeker and I think the increased size is definitely worth a couple more bucks. That's going to be it for this one guys. See you in the next one. That's going to be it for this video guys. Pay no attention to the mess going on behind me. Pay more attention to the mess going on on my shirt. Check this out. Finally got the merch available. That's right, finally hit 10K, so the merch is finally here. Make sure you check out the Teespring merchandise bar below the video. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe because we have more videos coming your way. In fact, I've thrown a couple of suggestions, videos for you to watch on the screen right now, so go ahead and check those out. When you get done, don't forget to pop over and check out the merchandise. There's plenty of stuff to see, and thanks for watching, guys.